Hello everyone, this is Professor Maloney and today I'm uh, creating a Microsoft Access demonstration video for you. Uh, as you're aware, you finished the Excel exam this past week and now we're moving on to Microsoft Access. Um, so what is Access? What's it all about? Well, Microsoft Access is a relational database management system. And what that basically means is um, it's anytime you're on the internet, you go to any site that requires you to sign in or any site that lets you view products, view books, view videos, view um, vacation destinations, view people, you know, view anything whatsoever. Um, they have this information housed in a database of some type and the whole point of using databases with the internet and with uh, company websites is to ensure that the data is freely available and accessible and workable, meaning it, it will work for what its purpose is. I, I mentioned in class a couple days ago, I believe, um, um, an example of a database being when we sign on to Blackboard, right? I go mdc.blackboard.com. First thing I have to do is, is sign in. I have to put my, my username and I have to put my password. How does it know whether I am in fact Professor Maloney? You know, when I do that, well, it, it doesn't take my word for it, my typed word for it, if you will. I have to be authenticated. I love my afternoon cup of coffee. So I have to be authenticated. So what happens is um, the, the username I type in and the password I type in are sent to a database and the database has lots of tables and one table may be you know user credentials or some such thing where it would have uh, as an example my employee ID maybe have my first name maybe my last name maybe the department I teach for um, you know all sorts of things like that okay but it'll also have to have a username and a password so that when I sign in the credentials are sent to this particular table in the database and then I'm either admitted or not based upon whether my password and my username in the table in this database are correct or not. All right. Then let's say I, I, I sign in correctly. I mentioned the other day how I then would see my class list. Right. When you sign in the same thing. So that's an example of at MDC. But you can also search for classes, right? When you're going to mdc.edu and, uh, and you want to search for classes for the next semester, you know, you can go in and you can click classes and you can search for classes. They come from a different database, okay? If you're going into a Facebook account or a Twitter account or anything, they also have to have authentication, but they also have a lot more stuff. Every time you click a link, that link has to send you somewhere. And many, many times it's to get data, like you're searching again for something. If I go to the Walmart site and I just say, all right, what am I looking for? Ah, I'm looking for, oh boy, I'm a fun guy, uh, uh, a gallon of whole milk or an 18 pack of extra large eggs or some oak leaf wine or some jumbo shrimp. You know, so I, I, I type a few letters in or I go to my my items, which are already over there because I shop via the list a lot these days. And you know, they have to verify. Do we have that product in stock, first of all? Second, if we do, then let's let him type in how many he wants. If he wants eight, but we only have two, it'll come back immediately to say insufficient quantity or out of stock or some such thing. So you see, everything works that way on the internet. It's, it's, I mean, on the internet via, because of databases. All right, so let's stop showing your professor drinking his coffee and go to open up an access database. But first I'll share my content, my, my screen. All right, all right, so now let's um, get over here and undo all this stuff so it doesn't matter what I'm showing there or not. All right, so I'm gonna, oh, I don't need to tab, sorry. I'm gonna go and open up Access. So I'm gonna type A-C-C-E-S-S -S down here and Access pops up. That's the one I want to open, all right? 
So Microsoft Access is way different than anything you've ever done. Okay, way different. You know, an, an Excel file is the name of the workbook. A Word document is the name of the Word document. A PowerPoint file is the name of the PowerPoint file. Uh, yes, in, in Excel, you can add worksheets, and those worksheets do have names. So for sure, Excel is closer to being like Access than anything else. But an Access database will start with a name. So I'm going to say first I want a blank database. It's going to ask me what I want to call it first. It's going to give me that thing. No, I don't want that. I'll say CGS1060. Um, fall. 2021 access demo prof baloney okay I want to create that but I don't want to create it in my documents I want to send it to where I have all my other stuff for you guys so I'll go up here to my desktop and then I'll go to MDC and I'll go to my fall 2021 I'll go to homestead I'll go to my 1060 whoops my that's my uh, programming um, I'll go to my 1060, and here's my videos, but I want this right here. This is an access database is the why, reason why there's nothing else here. If I save this as something else, there'd be tons of things. But So this is an access database, all right? So I'm going to say OK, and then create. All right, now, so now I have the name of my database. It's up here at the top of my computer up here in this reddish area, okay? All right, so now this is a table. It automatically gave me a table. So what is a table? Again, I mentioned this in class the other day. Um, a table is something that, dis that basically it, it's, a, it's a noun. It, it's, a, it's something that describes a noun. So it's like people, places, things, okay? So pretty well anything is a noun. Well, I mentioned in my a um, little bit of a lecture the other day in class that I was going to build this access database on video with three tables lit with the three tables listed below but 10 records in each. I told you guys this a couple days ago. So I'm going to have one class, uh, one table called classes. I won't use the word table, just classes. Another one called students. Another one called students classes. Okay, so classes, students, and students classes. So for this one here, I'll just go ahead now and already. Uh, you know what, first I'll do a little work and then I'll, I'll name it whatever. So I'm going to name this one students, okay? So I'm going to, first of all, in an access database, there's an awful lot of views. There's a lot of detail. There's a lot of things. So let's start with the home tab just to, again, show you what you've got. So from this home tab, we have access to what we call views, okay? Um, the default view is a data sheet view. That's the one that has this little grayish border around it. I move my cursor away, you see that to the left of data sheet view, you see that gray area around that rectangle, okay? So that's, that means that this is the view I'm in. Data sheet view is where we have our records, okay? Design view is where we create, where we add fields to the, in this case, the table. So if I click design view, it's going to already prompt me to save this table, which right now they're calling table one, watch. I click design view, I've got to name that table. Fine, I'll call this one students, All right? So students, and say okay. So now the table is called students. Now let me see what I can do to make this thing better for us in terms of size. Let's see, so when I'm in design view, I don't have much option, much in the way of options. Let's see. I want to make this bigger for you guys. So, hmm. <laughs> let's make this down here and see if, I don't see any resize here. And there's nothing here to let me resize. Let me go back to the design, uh, the data sheet view for a minute. In the data sheet view, I can. So in data sheet view, I can. But in this view, the design view, I cannot. Hmm. Okay, that's the way that works. So let me see how I can do this to work around it. Make this large again, but I cannot. There's not even a resize down here like in Word um, to make it bigger. Hmm. Well, um, that's going to make this tough. Crud. Crud, crud, crud. 
let me do it from this view then. I think from this view is better because then it's a little bit smaller, period. But um, let me just shoot. And by the way, I know access like the back of my hand. Do not worry. But this is just, uh, I don't play with a lot of things. And one thing I don't play with is size of files. In here. Physical size, that is. You know, let me just do a, um, which view, which, which control would maybe make something bigger? Control, control font. Let's see, control, yeah. oh, that's just putting a field there for me to escape. Mm. Oh, do, 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 do. Oh, well. All right, so in this view, we're not going to have much. Make font larger. Probably not going to give us anything. Font size, no, not in this view. The other view, data sheet view, yes, it would be visible. All right, so from here they won't let us. So let's let me tell you what I'm going to put in here. All right, so I'm going to type student ID. All right, so that says student ID. Now, when you create a field, generally you start with what we call the primary key for the table. The primary key in this students table is going to be your IDs. But rather than me have your ID numbers and type them in, I'm going to use a system whereby access will start with the first person I put in will be number one. And by the way, that person will be one of five students from my Monday, Wednesday CGS 1060 class, or one of five students from my CGS 1060, um, did I say Monday, Wednesday, and then Tuesday, Thursday class. Okay, so I'm, I'm putting five students from each class in my students list. But I'm just gonna pretend that uh, like somebody's student ID is one, and then the next person will automatically be two, and I'll go up to number 10, okay? All right, so student ID. And you notice this thing to the left of it, by the way? That's called a key. You can't see it with my cursor there. So I'll just hover there, and the pointy arrow at the top, at the 12 o'clock position, it's pointing at something. And that something is called a key. It's the primary key. So what it looks like, even though you can't see it from this view, and I apologize, but that key is, like that looks like a key, a regular key you might use for your car or whatever else, okay? So this is like the boss field. So student ID, and by using auto number, that means the first student will be one, the next one two, et cetera, okay? And I'm just going to say student ID is the primary key for the students table. That's all that means, all right? Now, I'm not going to put many fields, though, because I don't want you to not be able to see all this. So I'm going to put F name as the next one, okay? And you notice how it automatically now went to this short text. Short text means basically you can type up to like 250 something characters in it, which is more than enough for what we're going, 255, see down here below, that shows you how many. So 255, that's way more than necessary for a first name. So I'll just say here, first name of student. This area where I type on the right says description. It's optional, but it lets us know what we're doing, all right? And then down here, I'm gonna do L name, okay? Uh, actually, you know, I'll do MI for middle initial. So MI, middle, let's do middle initial of student. Not everyone has a middle initial, so it'll be an optional field. And then here, L name, obviously for last name of student. Okay. Now I'm not going to put cell phone numbers. I'm not going to put addresses. I, you know, I'll put city just to have something else, and then that'll be it. So city. Okay. City. Where student lives. All right. Okay. So I'm going to save that. All right. Save. Now, you, again, you, it might be hard for you to see that. I'm certain it's hard for you to see that stuff. Uh, let me go ahead and pull out my snipping tool. Um, did I save this thing? I did. Okay. So save that. That's fine. Yeah, yaddy, 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 yaddy. All right. So now I'll say new. I'm going to just do this to see if I can make this bigger, if it'll look bigger this way, just to kind of show you. Uh, it doesn't really look any bigger, does it? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. All right, well, sorry. But anyway, that's clear. It's just that it's small. 
Okay. Um, so now I have the fields, all right? Each field has field properties, which is what this these two words on the bottom here says, field properties. And down here it has things like field size. Now, with an auto number field, we can't change field size, okay? But with all text fields, so all these that say short text, we can change the number of characters we're going to allow to be used for these fields. So think about it, a first name, all right? Some of the students that I'm putting in this table, let me tell you here, I, I wrote them down. So I'm going to be writing down, where in the heck do I have my students' names? <laughs> well, I wrote down student name somewhere. Oh, well. My gosh, you're saying, Professor, what is wrong with you today? Today, Professor. Well, I don't know. I darn well wrote names down somewhere. I know that. Oh, here we are. So I've got names like Adrian, Giselle, Jamesy, Alexander, Jose, Stephanie, Giovanni, Grant, Bobby, and Chase. Okay, that's the 10 names I'm going to use. The longest is probably Alexander at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 characters. Okay? Nine characters is probably the, lo the longest name. My point of bringing this up is because I did mention to you in class that an access database is restricted to two gigabytes of total data. So, and I can't, by the way, go on too long or we won't be getting this database done. So I'm just going to do things. So field size, if you want to change the field size, you're in design view and you click in that field size for whichever one you, you're in up here, whichever row I'm in. So you can see I'm in the F name row. So I'm going to change this to, I'll say 12, because some people do have long names, but I think 12 is good enough, all right? Okay, I want to also make it a required field. So down here, this one says required, no. These are all called Booleans. When you see no or yes, if you double click in it, it'll change to the other choice. So Boolean just means yes or no. Right now, this one says no. Okay, and it's required field. So I'm going to double click in it and watch. It'll flip to yes. Boom, boom. Now it says yes. Okay, boom, boom. Now it's back to no. You can also do the down arrow on the right side and just choose yes or no. Okay, so yes. Now, if you make this one required, then you have to change the one that says allow zero length. Allow zero length means allow no entry. But so I'm going to say now no. So yes and no. All right. I also want a, uh, to put um, a caption. Caption is this one here. So because F name doesn't make a lot of sense to people, but database people, programmers and stuff, we don't use tons and tons of big words and spaces and whatever. So I'm just going to type here that this means first space name. And when we go over to the data sheet view, after I hit my save and go back to that other view, then up on the top, you're going to see it's called first name. But the field name is F name. All right. So that's what we're going to use. I changed the field size. I changed the caption. I change the required to yes. I change the allow zero length to no. I'm happy with that one. Middle initial. Well, middle initial doesn't need to be no 255. Obviously, it's one character. So I'm going to say one. I'm going to put a caption off middle initial. All right, two words, middle initial. I'm not going to make it required because a lot of my students, I'm, I'm an old, well, I'm an old Canadian dude. And, and up in Canada, anyway, pretty well everyone has middle initials. My actual name is John. Joseph, James, Maloney, all right? So my middle initial would be Joseph, and my, I'm Catholic, so I got a confirmation name, James. So middle initial, though, because otherwise MI might confuse people, all right? It will not be required, so I'll leave it as no, and I will allow zero length of yes, because not everyone has that, all right? Last name. Now, last names, especially with all my friends in South Florida, many of those, many of you have two or three last names, okay? Um, so because of that, I'm going to make the field size 25, all right? Again, Maloney, M-A-L-3-O-N-E-6-Y-7. Mine's seven. Most people's are probably less than 10, but a lot of um, people, um, you know, when, when somebody gets married, they keep their maiden name maybe, and they, they also then get the husband's last name and whatever. But I'm just going to say 25, right? Because it for sure can be a lot more than 10 or 15 if 
things like that happen. And some people have more than two. Some people have three or four names, right? Like um, Portillo, da, la, and then another long word. So that could be God knows how many. But I'm going to just say 25. All right. All right. Oh, sorry. And that's going to also, of course, be required. So I'm going to double click where it says no next to required and double click uh, where it says yes next to allow zero length to make that one no. And again, I want to put a caption. L name will now be last name. Okay. And again, this you'll see when we flip the view. City, I'll also make it 25, even though there are some cities, especially in some cultures, where three or four words is very common. But I'm, I'm just going to say it's 25. And I'm going to say this one's also required. So double click required, double click allow zero length, and then they flip. So that required is now yes, allow zero length is no. I don't need a caption for city because it's already named city. So it's going to show up city that way. Now watch when I hit the save, save, save. All right, go to my view. See, student ID is up there. First space name, middle space initial. Okay, I can move it over a little bit. Last space name, city, and then that's it. That's all I put, all right? Now, I cannot type in this where it says new because it's auto number. Remember, it's an auto number field, auto number. That means access assigns it. So when I type the first letter, then it will, this new will flip to the number one, all right? Okay, so now I'm going to take up my little list now, uh, students list. So Adrian is first name. And you see how it says one now next to him, his name? And Adrian, I'm going to say, has a middle initial of J. Don't know why. Last name, Brown. All right? So, and I'll say Adrian lives in Homestead. Some will live in Homestead. Some will live in other cities. All right? All right. So the second one will be Giselle. And those two people, by the way, do talk in my class. So that's one reason why I use them. And I'm going to say Giselle does not have a middle initial. And her last name is Gonzalez. Oh, shoot. Gonzalez can be S or Z. I think it's Z, which is the more normal. And because I want different cities, I'm going to say that Giselle lives in, um, let's see, uh, let's put her down in the keys, Key Largo. Okay. All right. Then the next one, Jamesy Leva. Jamesy, and I'll say no middle initial for Jamesy either. Leva. Okay. And we'll say Jamesy lives in, we'll say another homestead. Oops. Homestead. Okay, now, oh, in this view, sorry, I can make this view bigger. Silly me. 18 now. Make it much bigger to help you. Uh, 18. There, you're saying now that's a little better, Professor. All right, now let's make these wider. Make this wider. Make the middle initial doesn't need to be wider because it's not going to be big anyway to us. And first name, though, could get whatever. All right. All right. Now, so we've got three people. The next one is Alexander Moya. And we'll give Alexander a middle initial of A. He takes after the John Joseph Jeans philosophy, or his parents did perhaps. Alexander and it's Moya, all right? And we'll now have another, so what other cities are down there? Let's say Redland, Redland, all right? So now the next one is Jose Perez. Jose also uh, occasionally talks in class, says, Professor, it's not your fault if, if people don't want to do a great job. Jose Perez, he tells me, don't, don't stress out about it, Professor. You're a wonderful dude. All right, Jose Perez, and let's say, what other cities are down that way? We got two for Homestead, one for Key Largo, one for Redland. If we go east, then there's like Cutler Bay or whatever. I don't live down there, by the way. Cutler Bay. Now we'll go to um, the other class, I think, it's Stephanie, and I won't give her a middle initial, and Bonilla, and we'll say she lives in Kendall. Yeah, see, I forgot Kendall. All right, next one, Giovanni. Giovanni definitely talks to me sometimes anyway, when Giovanni actually is, uh, yeah, Giovanni, and Citronelle. And we'll give Giovanni, um, let's see, B, and Citronelle. He only has one end, right? Now, and we'll also say Giovanni's in Kendall. So we got a couple in Kendall. All right, next, um, Grant Davis. Oops, Grant. And we'll leave no a, a middle initial for this one, and then Grant Davis. And we'll say Grant is in, 
What is next to these other places? What's or what's next to Homestead? Darn it, Florida City, Florida City. All right, now after Grant, we've got uh, Bobby Casalakis. So Bobby, and we'll give him um, G, K A S S E L A K, Casalakis. Okay, and we'll say that he's also Homestead. All right, and then the last one is going to be. Um, Chase Jaro, Chase Jaro, and we'll say Chase is also homestead. All right, all right, so now we have our first table. This table is for students. I'm going to hit my save, all right? So I have 10 students, and I'm going to want to put some of these students in classes, all right? Right now, though, all I have is this, and typically there'd be thousands of students, okay? But I'm just obviously doing a little thing so that you can see what happens. So that's one table. So now I'm going to go to my create tab. Create because I want to get a new table. And here's table, the same way we just did it. But there's also a table design, meaning we'll start in the design view. Remember right now in the home tab, we're in the data sheet view, but I started in design view. All right. So I'll do this time. I'll start in the design view. So create table design. So now I'm in the design view. That's the one I can't make bigger. It's too bad. Darn it. But anyway. All right. So this one, though, I'm not going to put much. I, what, what was my second table? So classes. Oh, classes is my second. So, yeah, I'll just put like two, two things for each of these. So I'll have a field name called, um, let's see, class name. No space. So class name. Short text. Yeah. Um, and it is, and I'll put over here class name with the separation, and then I'll put. Oh wait, no, not class name, silly me. Class, what's it called? Code. I'll say class code, like meaning CVS 1060. Class code. Okay. Then class name. No spaces. Okay. And here name of class. Name of class. Okay, now, so for class name, like yours is called Introduction to Computers, or it may even be Introduction to Microcomputers. A lot of, letter, a lot of letters. I'm going to make these 30. Okay, so number of characters for class name, 30. And again, this one will definitely be required, so I'll double-click in Required to make it Yes, and double-click and allow zero length to make it No, because I'm forcing people to type something into the class name, all right? Um, and I also want to do the caption just to separate the class and the name. So the caption will be the same, but with a space. So class space name, okay? And then for class code, class code is only going to be CGS1060C. So that's eight characters. And some are just um, like ENC1101 would be seven. So there's seven or eight. I'll just make it eight, okay? All right. And this is for sure also required. So double click in required. Double click in allow zero length. So it's now required is yes. Allow zero length is no. And for the caption, I'll put class space code. Okay. All right. But now this one, I also want to make the primary key. The reason the other one came with a primary key and this one did not is because officially the first table, remember, defaulted to the, the, the default view, which is data sheet view. And then when you flip the view to go to design view, it assigns a, a, a field called ID and automatically makes that the primary key. You can change it, though. So when you start in design view, like I did for this one, you can make the primary key yourself. So I'm just going to right click here. You can see make primary keys that way. And it'll then put the key to the left of class code. So primary key. OK. All right. So now we have the setup. Class code is eight characters. The caption is class space code. It's a required field, and it we will not allow zero length. Okay. Class name is a little bit bigger field, 30 characters, you know, because some classes have quite a few words. And the uh, caption, class space name, it's also required and allows zero length. No. So now I'll go to the design view, and when I click it, it's going to prompt me to save this table. Right now, you see up here, it's called table one because I haven't saved it yet. So when I hit this button here to go send me over to the data sheet view to input some records, it'll tell me to name the table. All right. So here we go. 
and you must first save the table. I want to. So I shall call this one classes, right? Classes. All right, so now we have a classes table. And if you're looking on my left side here, these are the access objects. So I've got classes and I've got students, two tables, okay? All right, now I want, I already have records member in the students table right here. So now I want to do the same in the classes table, all right? So here's where I'm going to put the class code. This I can make big again. So 18, okay? And let's go ahead and separate these to, to give us a little, oops, a little bit more room. And here to give us a lot more room. All right. And maybe even a little more than that. All right. So class code. So the first one I'm going to enter is CPS1060C. Name. I won't put the official name, but I'll just say intro to computers. Okay. Now, I also put down my little list of classes that I'm going to type in. Some of these are classes you guys will take, some are not. So the ones that are more likely that you won't take, I'll type some of them in. And this is called Advanced Desktop. The ones that I'm putting in are things I teach, but I will put in some that you guys have to take. And although obviously some of you are computer science or computer programming or computer networking or cloud essentials or whatever, or cybersecurity, in which case you have to take some of these classes. All right. Uh, that one, and then I'll put CTS 1145. This one is called Cloud Essentials. Oh, you know what? I should have put the number credits. And see, number credits. Should I do that? Nah, I'm just going to make it simple. Yeah, just make it simple. Even though it'd be nice for you guys to see your credit hours, right? And no, nah, I'm not going to do it. All right. So CTS 1145. The next one, uh, COP2800, COP2800, and this is Java 1. Next one, COP1332, and this is V, I'll put the whole thing, Visual Basic 1. And then COP, this is the one I teach most at Homestead. The others are more online, but we do teach Java in the spring too. Uh, so it's COP1334 is C++. One. All right, and that's uh, enough of my classes. Now, some that you guys may also uh, take would be like ENC 1101, and I'll just say that's English 1. May or may not technically be called that. And by the way, mine are not. There's you know, Java and another word, Visual Basic and other words, C++ and a couple words. Anyway, so that, and then I'm going to put SPC. I think it's 1017 for speech. Speech. That's one, two. That's eight, okay? And then I shall put in psychology. Psychology. I think you guys, it's PSY, and I wrote it down as 2012. I don't know what one that is, but I'll just say pi, uh, psychology. Okay, so that's now nine records, and one more I shall use. One more. Oh, it's going to be another one of mine, it looks like. Oh, Matt 1033. Sorry, it's not. Matt 1033. And I'll just say um, Algebra 1. I'm not really sure that that's true. But anyway. All right. So that's going to be our classes. So we have students, and they're all in the students table. We have classes. They're all in the classes table. I'm going to hit my Save button. Okay? So we now have done two objects. They're both named. Okay? And the database is named CGS 1060 underscore fall underscore 2021 underscore access underscore demo underscore prof underscore Maloney. Where you see the colon, that's not, that's nothing else. That's just where it is. Okay. So that's the name of the database. Right. We're going to need one more table. But first, I want to just go ahead and show you what we do with databases, which I mentioned is to look for records, search for classes, ask questions. Questions are called queries. Oh, by the way, remember I mentioned that the, the two tables, tables are nouns, right? People, place, thing, stuff like that. And then the fields that, that are subjective to these, like the, these are the boss fields. The primary key is the boss, okay? So the boss field and the boss field. And all these other would be called adjectives. They describe the boss field. So like an adjective describes a noun, okay? So here, class name describes the class code, is all that means, all right? Okay, so we have two tables. 
Now, I want to ask the database a question, and you're going to love the answer. Watch. Create. And I want to create a query. Again, I can do it a couple ways. I'm going to do it with design view in, for this one. Wizards, are they just do it a little quicker. A design view is also good, and it's good to learn certain things. So I click the query design, okay? And now it's asking me, well, what kind of a query, query means question, what kind of query do you want to make? And it says, this wizard creates a select query with, from the fields you pick. I want a simple, oh wait, why did I, that's silly me. Qu query design is what I want. Um, so I just demonstrated how you could do it with the wizard. So when you do design, which is what I just now clicked on, so create, and then I clicked query design, then on the right side, you see the tables. You have to add which tables you want to put in this query. Well, I want to put in the classes, so I'll just double click it, and boom, boom, see it pops over there? Well, I want to put in the students. That was so much fun. Boom, boom, wow, it's there too, all right? And when you see a down arrow uh, on the vertical scroll bar, it just means that there's more fields, all right? Okay, so I have two fields in the classes table. One is the primary key, okay? This is called class code, that's the boss field, and the other is called class name. In the students table, I've got student ID, that's the boss field, the one with the primary key. Then I got F name, M I L name, and city for first name, middle initial, last name, and city respectively. Now, down below, let me pull this up higher, but down below are fields that I can pull from these tables to return records. Because basically what I'm going to be doing in this query, meaning question, is say, well, which students are taking which classes? I want to know. I'm so curious. And you know, curiosity killed the cat. All right. So I want to know the class code. I want to know the class name. I want to, I don't care about the student ID. So I'm not, oh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and put it. But then it's going to, I'm going to put too many things. So I'll just put the first name, the last name, and I'll put the city. So for this one, I'm saying I want to see the class code from the classes table. That's what this says. The first one here says field. Field, by the way, there's a drop down, and you can see what you can do with it. But for now, we don't want to do anything with it. So we got class code, and it's from the classes table. We have class name. It's also from the classes table. And again, I apologize for for this not being large, darn it. Okay, and then the students table, I have three fields. First name, or F name, I should say, F name, and L name, and city. I didn't take the student ID, even though it's the boss. I don't have to take the boss if I don't want. In other words, you don't always want to get every field from every table when you're doing a query. You may just want to do it based on certain things that you were asked by your boss to do. The boss is always right, so if they ask us for whatever fields, we give it to them. All right. Anyway, so there we are. Now, here is a question for you guys. How many records is this query going to produce? Hmm, here's my students table. I have 10 records. Here's my classes table. I have 10 records. Hmm, here's my query. I don't have any records, but when I run it, it's going to give me some records. Okay, well, so did I sign, and this is where you guys get to hear your name, some of you, of course. Did I sign Adrian up for any classes? No, I did not. Did I sign Giselle up for any classes? No, I did not. I'm not a good advisor, am I? Did I sign Jamesy up for any classes? No, I did not. Did I sign Alexander up for any classes? Yes, I did. Yes, I, no, I did not. Darn, no. I forgot. I forgot to sign people up. I went to work today. I, I didn't. What an advisor. Jose Perez, did I sign him up for a class? No. Stephanie, did I sign her up for a class? No. Giovanni, Grant, Bobby, Chase. No. None of you are in any classes. Let me run my query. All right. So first I'm going to save it. So I'm going to right click on it. I just hit the save button up here. Okay. So I'm going to save the query. What do you want to name it? Oh, I don't want to call that. I want to know junk query. So I'm going to say J-U-N-K Q-U-E-R-Y. Why is it called junk query? I'll show you in a minute. All right, right here. See now I had a tables uh, object and two tables, classes and students. Now I have a queries object and so far one query, junk query. Wow, 
I want to run my query. So let's close all these things. Right click, close them all. Close all. Right? I want to run the query. Here it goes. I'm going to double click it. Boom, boom. Wow. Are you kidding me? I got a hundred darn records. What the heck did I do? Wait a minute. I got, wait, wait. Chase Jaro is in Intro to Computers. Yeah, I know. I know. But he's not in my advanced desktop applications, and I'm the only one teaching it on the, at the virtual college. And what is, wait a minute. Chase, we, we, we canceled Cloud Essentials this term because I didn't darn well get enough students to register. And you see how good of an advisor I am. I signed no students up for any classes. God, I'm a comedian. You know, Canadians are all actors. Understand that. All right, anyway. Um, Chase is in Java 1. He's in Visual Basic 1, C++ 1, English 1, Speech. Oh, I didn't say Speech 1. Anyway, Speech, Psychology, and Algebra 1. Wow. First of all, I'm pretty sure there's a limit of how many classes we allow students to take. That's why I needed to put the number of credits. So I could have also done calculations on figure out how many credits there are. But there's tomorrow. All right. Anyway. Wow. Let's go above, Chase. Wow. Here's, oh, my God. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. There's something weird. Bobby Kasselakis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten records. Chase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 10 records. Wait a minute. Grant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Wait a minute. Giovanni. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Oh, there's something wrong. I know Stephanie's not in 10 classes. Oh my God. One, two, what? Jose, you cannot be. Please. You're in four classes. One, two. Oh my God. Alexander. Jamesy. Giselle. Adrian. What happened? What happened? It's a junk query. Okay. That's the short answer. It's a junk query. Why is it a junk query? It's junk query because garbage in, garbage out. Okay. I mentioned in class the other day again. I haven't mentioned it today in this video recording yet. That um, the biggest databases in use in the business world are normally RDBMS systems. That's relational database management system, where you have fields in one table match up with a like field in another table. So in other words, because Adrian hasn't been assigned to any classes, a junk query treats this like a, car, a car, Cartesian product. Maybe one or two of you remember that from high school, maybe algebra. Uh, Cartesian product just basically means return every darn record of each, in this case, table and apply it against every other record in the other table. That's basically what a Cartesian product means. So in other words, Adrian, Giselle, Jamesy, Alexander, Jose, Stephanie, uh, Giovanni, Grant, and Bobby, and Chase are all in every class. Well, I don't think so. They'd be in like, just based on my classes, every one of mine is four credits. So let's go down to the four credit one. So this would be four credits, this would be four credits, it's two, this is four credits, it's three. That's three. These are th uh, four credits. So every one of mine, there's 24 if I have six of them. And the other four are three. So that's 12. So 12 and 24, it's 36 credits. I don't think any school lets any student take that number. Anyway, okay, enough, enough, enough. So close it. But that's a junk query. So how do I make a good query? So the next thing we're going to talk about here is I need to create another table. It's a join table. Let's go back to my what I said the other day. So we have a classes table, we have a students table, and we now have a junk query. Let's see, oh, since I uh, did it that way, junk query, okay? So what do I still want to do? I'm going to want a good query, but I need another table. So I first need another table. That's going to be students classes. So we've got to do that. So we've got to have like a check mark. So students classes table. Uh, then I have to have relationships. So that's another thing to do. Then we'll make a good query with the same fields, and then you're going to see the, the good logic of a database. All right, and we got to get moving. I know, I know. All right, so I'm going to create another table, students, classes. All right, so create design, table design. So I'm going to put here um, class code. This time, uh, I think I left out a short text, so I'll leave that there. This is going to be foreign key from 
classes table. Okay, I'll explain foreign key in a minute. And then the other primary key was student ID. Student ID, oops, ID. And this one we want as number because in the other table it was auto number, and I told you it was auto number because that way access assigns them. So we have 10 students, so we got number one, number two, number three, up to number 10. Okay. When you you can't make student ID in this other table auto number as well, because then if the order is different, they won't match up. So we make this one number, because auto number is number. It's just auto, so we're in we're putting auto, meaning automatic for number in part of the name. So here it's just going to be a number, and this one's also a foreign key, so foreign key from students table. Oh, good God, Professor Maloney. All right. Now, I want to do more stuff. I want to make a primary key of class code and student ID. This will be called a composite primary key or a, um, a boss primary key. So it just means basically two primary keys in the one table. So you see I've got student ID selected there. So I'll hold down my control key and go to the class code one up here. And now they're both selected. You can see they're dark gray. So if I right click and say primary key, watch what happens. See, they both have a key now. Okay. So class code has a key. This one has a key. Let's undo it. Primary key undone. It's on. If you undo for one, it undoes both because they're both the boss. So to do it again, and you can try it with the shift key. So this time I'll do the shift key. Okay. And now right click primary key. Uh -uh. So you got to do it with the, with the control key. So undo again, primary key, click up here, control key, click down here, right click anywhere within either one of them and primary key, and they're both primary key. All right, okay, save again. Table name, students, classes. Never put spaces in, in anything you do for me. Obviously, when you're doing the mind tap work, you do what they want, but uh, we don't like spaces because then basically what happens is you'd have uh, quotes around students and quotes around classic uh, classes, and we then have to treat that differently in the programming world to make the database work. So. Try not to do too many spaces. All right, so okay. All right, so now I have a third table. Now, in this one, I want to put in only good student ID, oh, sorry, good class codes, meaning these 10 class codes only. I can't put in, let's say um, there's also uh, English 1102, right, for English 2. So I don't have ENC 1102 here. But if I type ENC 1102 in this table right here, I want it to bark at me meaning to say, wait a minute, you don't have that in the other table, the parent table, so let's not do that, right? So that's what we have to talk about for a few minutes, and then we're hopefully going to start wrapping it up. All right, so in students' classes, first I'll just do one to demonstrate, and then I'm going to go to database tools to make our relationships, all right? Okay, so uh, class code, there's nothing in it yet. Student ID, you see a zero. That's because the, the, I made it a number field. And number fields, therefore, doesn't know a number yet, but I'm going to put this number here to override that zero, right? But the same thing. With students, I only want numbers 1 through 10. I want, if I type 12 or 11 or 10,014, I want to be barked at, saying, no, uh, that one's no good, all right? All right. So I got 1 through 10, and then some of these classes I'll remember, but otherwise, I'll just go back and forth this way, right? Okay, so let's go to my students' classes again. And now put in a record. So I'm going to put in CGS 1060. And remember I said 1060C. Oh, here I'm in this view where we can make it bigger anyway. Thank God. So 18, right? And make this thing here a little bit bigger. And make this thing here a little bit bigger. Okay. All right. Oh, I didn't put uh, the space, which I really wanted to do, but it's okay. All right. So I got CGS 1060C. All right. And remember this table is a composite primary key. Um, both of these fields are composite primary key, which means this CGS 1060 here is the child table, because that's students' classes. It has to match up with the parent table from classes with CGS 1060C. So if it doesn't, it won't let this happen once I enter the record. But right now I haven't done anything, so it will, all right? So now over here in student ID, if I delete that, and start with, I'll just put student one because that's what we have so far, all right? And I tab, it will enter this. It'll take it, all right? But it took it without checking anything on this field 
and without checking anything on this field. In other words, right now it's still junk. Okay, it's junk. I'm gonna hit the save though. Save. All right. Now I'm gonna show you what will happen on all the other names, uh, co classes we enter, and student IDs we enter when we go in here. So now I want to make relationships. So I go to database tools. Database tools is where I create a relationship between tables. So I'm going to click on relationships. Okay. Now we're over on this side. We see the tables. I have to add all three tables. I double, uh, double click the last time, but I can also just click and drag. You can click and drag or double click. Okay. Doesn't matter which way you do it. All right. I like to have the, um, what I call the composite table underneath. So I'll move this one up here a little bit, move this one up here a little bit, move this one up here a little bit. Okay. And now I have to relate class code from this table, the parent table of classes, with class code from this table, the students' classes. I've got to um, create a relationship between student ID in the students' table, the primary table, with student ID as the child key in this one or the foreign key in this table. All right. It's an easy thing to do. So all I did again is I added all three tables. If I had four tables, I'd add four. If I had five, I'd add five. Right now I have three. All right. I'm going to pull this one down just a little bit. I like, I'm a pretty good artistic person as you guys have probably already seen. You see his eyes and a nose, right? That's sort of like a face. Man, this dude. All right. So here's what I do. I click class code in parents. So I'm clicking with my left mouse and I drag. Okay. I can't release it in the classes table. That's you know, like it's not an area where, where it'll allow me to, dra uh, to drop. It also won't let me drop in any non-table area. So I can't drop here. See, it's got that, uh, what do you call it, thing with the blah, blah in it. So I can't drop it there. But I could drop it over here, and I could drop it over here anywhere. Anywhere it would work. And because it really wouldn't work, this is where I could have logic errors. Logic errors mean something done wrong. So since it's called class code, and I purposefully called this one class code to match it up, obviously that's where I want to drop, right? So what you do is you pull your pointer from there. I'm dragging again, remember, with my left mouse button. And I can drop on top of student ID, but you, you don't match class code with student ID. You match class code with class code. So I'm going to release right here, and look what will happen. I released it, and now it tells me all this stuff. It's called edit relationships. It says uh professor maloney i think you want to match class code and it even tells me which table from the classes table here's class code there's classes table and i think you want to match that with class code from the student classes let's see drag it over wow class code from the student classes wow you are a smart thing access database world man wow you are cool right i do want to all right so now they're going to be matched up when i hit create but there's a few things we got to talk about here. So first we verify that they're right, the, the right fields from the right ones. If they're not, I can just change it. Like I can click here and change, uh, change the student ID. But now that would not be good. Uh, it'll still let me create it. It will let me do it. But I'm going to get crap, right? So class code from classes. And again, I could change it, but I'm not going to. So class code from, from classes. And I want it to match up with class code from students' classes. So it's done. Now, enforce referential integrity. What this one means is if I change the name of quote unquote class code or someone who replaces me at some point, they want to change this, this name to code or C code or CLASS dash code or CLASS underscore code, you know, whatever. They want to change it with referential integrity enforced, what that means is any changes in class code here in the classes table, that's the boss table, okay? I want them to go down to any other place in the database. Pretend there's dozens of tables now. Any other place that class code is referred to and change it to the same new name. That's what that means, okay? Now, this one here, oh, uh, enforce referential integrity. Sorry. Let me, let me fix that. I did not do that right. Uh, enforce referential integrity means, and this is the, the right answer, sorry. It means if the class code in the classes table does not match with a class code that we are entering. Remember, right now we don't have anything in this table, but I did that on purpose. So the class code I entered down here must already exist up here in the parents table with enforce referential integrity. So that is what that does. This is extremely important right 
So it, it won't allow us to put in bad information. And you're going to see that I'll put in a bad information in a, in a few minutes, but it won't let me. All right. So enforced referential integrity means that anything put in this subservient table, the, the child table, must match with the primary key in the parent table that it's matched up against. So this is what I want. And yes, now here's what I was just saying, cascade update related fields. So here if I change the class code name or add an extra word to it or whatever, then yeah, if it, if it exists in any other table, update that related table too, all right? This one we do not do. Cascade delete related records is very bad. I told Microsoft back in 2003, and I promise you I, I did this, that, you know, cascade delete related records, Microsoft, that's not a good thing. And I demonstrated, because of course they said, what do you mean it's not a good thing? I said, well, look, if you, and I worked at a, a, a different place then, but it was a university, uh, and it was in teaching programming and database classes for the most part, this particular university. This was when, when technology was really taken off. So in the early 2000s, I had lots and lots and lots of students coming into all these classes. But anyway, so um, I said, yeah, th this is not a good thing because if you allow cascade delete, uh, delete related records, it means if I delete a class code up here in the classes table, it'll also de be deleted down here. And you might say, well, who cares? And I say, well, all right, so how about this? Think about it when you're talking about money, and I'm talking to Microsoft, not you guys about this, but all right, so now a student is billed for this particular class code in another table, right? I'm only demonstrating three tables here, but there could be 33, there could be 63 tables, it could be lots of tables. Um, and if you allow it to be deleted from the parent key, the boss key uh, table, and then all the subservient tables, all the little child tables down below, are automatically going to delete it too, that's no good. I said, yeah, what if a student, a student goes to, from Miami-Dade College, maybe goes to UCF. That's where my two kids went, right? Well, one's still there. He graduates next month. But anyway, a lot of you guys might want to go to UF or UCF or FSU or UM or FIU or FAU or my favorite, Notre Dame, but wherever. And if you allow, if you then allow us to delete that person once he or she leaves, then we don't have any of their records of what they did in this class, uh, in any classes at Miami-Dade College. So this is no good. But they said, no, 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 no. We know that, Professor Maloney. You're right. I mean, but we know it. So we don't do that. So why do you have that again? Well, because we might have tables that we want to be able to delete things on. Oh, okay. Sure. Makes sense. Doesn't, of course. Uh, it's a one-to-many relationship which means that each one class code in the classes table, okay, can only occur one time in that table. But in students' classes, many students can have that same class code, so this will be the many end up the one-to-many relationship. So when I drag now to do this, I've already dragged, so now I'm gonna create it and watch what happens. The database could not lock it because it's already in, oh, students' classes, I gotta close all that out. So now I gotta undo, undo, I got to close students' classes now. Sorry, so I got to close all my tables. Actually, close, close, close. All right. I only want to have relationships open. So I've already explained it. Though. So I'm going to drag class code from classes to class code in students' classes. I'm going to verify that it's class code from classes and class code from students' classes. That's what I want. I want to enforce referential integrity, meaning if what I try to type in to students' classes does not first exist in classes, then it won't, it won't allow me to type that code in. Then I want to type in, I want to put a check mark for cascade update related fields in, in case either of these field names change in the boss table area, then those changes should be reflected in all the subservient uh, child tables, all right? I don't want to ever touch cascade delete. All right, so create. And now you see a one, next to class code in the classes table. This thing here that looks like sunglasses, that's the Greek sign for infinity. Again, some of you with uh, high school math might know that. So one in the parent table, many. So class code CGS1060C can occur a million times in this table, but up here can only occur one time, all right? We do the same thing with students. Student ID to student ID. So. Same thing, student ID up here in the student's table can only occur one time. 
even if now obviously there's a lot of um, people down here with very similar names like there's not a whole lot of John well John is not a name anymore especially in South Florida but there's a lot of people down here with the same name so like as an example Jose Perez is a student in this class right Jose is one so there may be uh, 200 Jose Perez's in, in in Miami it's very possible right it's very possible so having two people with the same name is perfectly fine but they all must need a different unique student ID right so we may have Jose dot Perez 001 at MDC dot edu from like 10 years ago or 20 years ago but now if there's any Jose Perez that's coming in it may be Jose dot Perez 204 meaning the 204th Jose Perez at mdc.edu etc but anyway so that's again what how these things work right the boss fields work so everything works well so and for referential integrity yes student ID from students we verify student ID from students classes we verify the boss field is student ID from students this one the subservient or the the other one is student ID from the child table and then we want to enforce referential integrity. I just explained that again, right? You can only have one of each student ID, even though we can have a million of the same name. And then cascade update related field, same as we did before. And we verify it's again one to many and we create. And now the one is next to student ID and students and the Greek infinity sign is next to, stu and next to student ID and students classes. Hit the save button, close relationships, close. Go back to students' classes where we have one student. Now watch. Boom. Let's enter student two. CGS 1060. Enter. And I'll I'll put in a good student ID too, because that person also wants to be in here. All right. And I'll the heck? Oh darn. Microsoft Access is a joke. You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in table classes. What? I'm so confused. Well, it means that this table, students classes, it knows where we are, is trying to, I'm trying to enter a record, but the related, remember we went to database tools, made relationships, which by the way, are gonna be over here once I hit that save. Um, but anyway, because CGS 1060 is not the, the, the field, it's CGS 1060C. So I say okay, Okay, and it just comes back here. I could, I'd have to tidy it up in programming to make it even better, but this is just a little intro class. So I come over here, I type C again. Now watch, tab and tab, and voila, it's A-OK. -okay. So let's give this person English 1101. Uh, let's give number one that person. And then let's give this person Matt 1033. And same thing, number one. Then let's go down here and give the same thing, ENC. 1102 to student two and whoops 1102 to oh I don't have an ent 1102 1101 sorry 1101 to that one and then that'll take all right so I just want to put about 25 records here so that all of you guys get a class or two or three that you're supposedly taking all right so and I of course want to put some of mine other than that thing but let's also give you guys speech. So I remember some of these. I think it was 1017, but if it's not, it'll bark at me when I try to do it. And give this to number, no, yeah, give him another or her another class. And then another SP, oops, PC 1017 to number two. So these guys got lots of classes. It's not fair, Professor. You're not giving me any. I know, I know, I know. But look, let's see. Um, Mm -hmm. Adrian and Giselle, they've taken a lot of classes. Sorry, Jamesy, Alexander, Jose, Stephanie, Giovanni, Grant, Fabian, Chase. Yay. Boy, he's so funny. All right. So back in here. Uh, let's add up some more. But now I'm going to be picking other students and, of course, some of my classes. So let's now pretend that the next three people only take my whatever classes. And we won't even count CGS. Actually, we will count. So CGS, 1060. C. So now let's say every well everyone's in this one. So let's just make sure that way I count for everyone. So CGS 1060 C and number four. I gotta go all the way to number 10. So CGS 1060 C. You know what? Let me also do blah blah blah. Control copy over here. Number five here. Control Victor here. Number six. 
pay, uh, tab, again, control V that in, paste it in, over here, number seven. So now every one of you will be in at least one class. Oh, aren't I so kind? Okay, eight. I mean, obviously you're all in this class, so yada, 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 nine and 10, boom, boom. Okay, so now every student has at least one class, but a couple students have a bunch of classes, but I, I but a lot of classes aren't represented. That's not fair. We only have one, two, three, uh, two, three, <coughs> four. We only have four classes represented and only one that I teach. So let's <coughs> add a couple more. All right, so I said I teach CGS 2108. And let's copy that one now. Okay, copy it. Control copy that. That. Let's give this to now student three. Okay. And also control V and give it to student number, oops, number, number, uh, number four. Okay. And then we got to do it again. It's going to be a lot of work. We may have 50 classes. And then number five. Okay. But now with no more of that. So now let's go to the next one of mine. So let's see, I said uh, COP1332. This one was my last term, Visual Basic. Tab that and give this to number six. And let's come backwards. Oops. Uh, come over here again and copy, copy again so we can have a few people in it. Control, copy that. Tab, tab. Control, V that. And put numbers. Oops. Tab. Ah. tab. Number seven, and we'll also put the same class and number eight. We're moving along, putting some students in classes. Now, so now we got four, five, six, seven, and eight have a three, four, five, six, seven, eight at least have one other class, but that's not nearly enough. But I got to do nine and ten. So now I want to say control V that, but I want to change it to the C class, which I'm teaching two of them this term. So COP 1334, actually one of you guys, but I didn't pick his name, is actually in that class. Anyway, so COP 1334, I'll say for number nine, and then again that one, and this for number 10. So again, see, I'm trying to be um, consistent to give everyone a couple of classes. So I think now everyone has at least two classes. Should I just end it? I'm still mad, though. There's so many of my classes not represented. Oh, who cares, Maloney? It's only a demo. All right, so there's 23 classes. All right, so save that, all right, save. Now, so next thing I want to demonstrate is close that down, close, close that down, close. So we know we got a bunch of students, 23 anyway with classes, okay? Well, not necessarily 23 students, but 23, 10 students taking either one, two, three, or even four classes, something like that, all right? So we got the students, we got the classes, so we know those things and they, they're a-okay, all right? So close that, close. All right, but now I want to show you how you can add another record. So I'm gonna go to students' classes and I wanna add another record, but we don't normally, this is programmers and database administrators, okay, and database analysts. We don't allow people to come in and play with our tables, uh-uh-uh. So we create a form to allow them to input. So let's go over here, create again. So we did table design and table. We did query design. We haven't done query wizard, but you're gonna be doing plenty of that in the, in the training modules that you're doing. So then there's form, form design, and blank form. I don't really care for forms. Really form wizard's probably the best way for me. I'm not a fancy person. But this thing here is like the form wizard. Watch, I'm gonna click. So I'm single clicking on students' classes. And once I click this form right here, literally, literally in one second, well, say two seconds, that form will be based on this class. Watch. Now this this table. Boom. 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 There it is. Okay, it's already done. Wow. Cool, professor. Cool. But what does it do? Well, let's see. So, oh, what am I saying? I didn't want to do another student's class. No, I don't want this one. No, I don't want this one. No, I don't want that one. No, I don't want. No, do not save it. I want to add one more student. Okay? One more student. So now I got to go back to, shoot, you know, I'm, I'm just going to use the, the kid that I just mentioned. I'm not going to have any reason for doing it other than I want to put the, the kid that's in both my CGS 1060C class this term, and he's also in COP 1334. His name is Kevin Relo. So I'm going to now add him as a student, but not through this table. So get out of that darn table. I'm going to do it through a form. So I'm going to single click on students 
okay? And create the same form here, boom, boom, all right? But see, now every student shows the classes they're in. So Adrian Brown, as an example, he's in my CGS 1060, he's in my, or not mine, he's in English 1101, Math 1033, and Speech 1017. Congratulations, Adrian. So it shows the student ID and his or her classes, because now we've done more stuff to this. So I just want to add a new student. The ones in here are the inner circle. Like if I click this greater than down here, now I'm at Giselle, and she's in three classes. If I click next, now I'm at Jamesy, and Jamesy is in uh, two classes, okay? If I click again, I'm at Alexander, he's in two. I'll just keep tabbing, well, I gotta say the name, so, so Jose, um, Stephanie, mm -hmm. Giovanni, mm -hmm. um, who, Grant, mm -hmm. Bobby, and Chase. But now see, I got no more students. So remember I said, we do not allow direct access to a table. That would be a stupid thing to do if you're a programmer or you're a database administrator or database analyst. So what I'm gonna do is add a new record on the bottom row of records. These are for the students. The ones I've been tabbing are students. The other is just related stuff for the students. But in the case of my new one, he is not gonna be in any of these. So I'm gonna click this bottom right one here where it says new blank record. So at this bottom record, okay, I'm clicking the one with greater than, and then a little yellow box area, that's new record, so boom, okay? So here, just like in the table, I can't type his name in here. And by the way, I gotta first go to form view. So now I have a third view. We had the design view, well, actually a fourth. We had the design view and the data sheet view, but when you're in a form, there is no data sheet view. The next ones are design, layout, and form. The form view is the one that lets me input records, so I'm gonna click form view. And now it gives me this. I still can't type in it. I tab. I want Kevin. Oops. Kevin and Relo. Oh, no. Middle initial would just say he doesn't have one either. Relo. All right. All right. So, and we'll say that Kevin is in Kendall. All right. I won't give him any classes yet. All right. But now, right when I click away from this form, I will have 11 students in this table. Remember, I'm not in that student's table. I'm in this student's form. You may say, well, where? Let's prove it, Professor. Well, let's hit my save. See, it says save as form name students. What am I gonna call this? Students um, form. Students form, all right? So say okay. So now I have students form down here, right? Double click on students form. That shows you that I'm, that's where I am. I have now 11 records. But watch when I double click on students here now. I have Kevin Relo added, okay? All right, so that's enough of that. So, but now let's give poor Kevin a couple classes because for sure he is in CGS 1060C and he's also in COP 1334. So let me at least do that for poor Kevin. So I've got his students' classes. So now I gotta add a couple more records down here. CGS 1060C, and I know for sure he's in it. His student ID is 11. That's now a good ID. Um, COP 1334, that is a good class code. Student ID again, 11, and then tab, and now save. Save, okay? So now Kevin's in a couple classes. Now what do I want to do? Well, I want to do two more things. Next, I want to run a good query, and then I want to run a report. All right, so a good query where all these students from this, from all these, all them, they all show up this way, the right way now, okay? And students that are not in it, they won't show up. All right, so close off, close off. All right, now, <sighs> create a query. And again, I want a query from design. That's just the way I like them. So double click classes, oops, double click classes, double click students, double click students classes. And let's move this one there and this one here. And now you see, oh, okay, yeah, those relationships are coming over. They're coming over. He can sing too. My God, that Canadian can do it all. All right. So I want, I, in the last time, I think I had class name, but not class code. I had um, first name. I don't think I had middle initial. I had last name and I had city. 
think that's the fields I had. If not, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I want a query with class, uh, classes from class name. Students, uh, sorry, class name from classes. First name from students. Last name from students. And city from students. And now, here's a run button. Yeah, that's called a run button. That red exclamation mark. Boom, run. Wow, are you kidding me? Look at this action. I've got Intro to Computers with Adrian Brown. I've got Intro to Computers with Giselle Gonzalez. I've got, oh, there's no logic, but I do have all those things. So if I want to sort them by a class name or by a uh, last name or whatever, because I don't have class code. See, if I would have added class code, then it would look even more handsome, let's say. So let's go back to the design view on this one. Let's go to design view, and let's add now class code. There, class code's in it as well. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, so now run it. Oh, yeah, but class code's way over on the right. Let's see if we can go back to that view again. View, 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 design view. Let's see if I can make this class code here. Oops, let's, let's see how I can do that. There. I want this going way left, way left, way left. That's where I want it. There. Class code's first now. Let's run it. Oh, yeah. Now. So in CGS 1060, it's still not really organized. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I need to do a filter by class code so that all class codes come up first. That's what I want to do. How the heck am I going to do that? Filter A through Z. There. So now all the CGS 1060s are listed, then the CGS 2108s, then the COP 1332s, then the COP 1334s, then the ENC 1101s, then the MAT 1033. Look at that. Only one person's in math and two speech. Sorry, I, I just couldn't do it all. But I also, of course, could have uh, filtered by last name or whatever else or by city, right? But anyway, so that's that. We're running out of time. I know it's going to be such a long tape. All right, let's save this query. Uh, right click, uh, save, call it good query. Right. I'll say this one good and Q E R Y, save it that way, run it. <sighs> All right, now close that. Now, finally, I want to close with a report. So the boss is finally saying, look, I want to see what the heck you've done. How many students? This is for the advisor. Remember, Maloney, I did a bad job. I put no one in any classes. But I do now. So I want to hover over good query. Okay. And now I want to create. And this one, I want to create a report. Uh, report, report, report. Where are my reports? Where are my reports? Report, design. Ah, uh, report wizard. Let's do a wizard. All right, Riz, wiz, wizard. All right. So I want all the fields, all those fields, okay, over here. And I want them from the good query. All right. So, in other words, I'm sending the boss a report of every field in the good query because I'm proud of how it looks now. All right. Fine. How do you want to view your data? Uh, I don't know. By classes, by students. Yeah, let's do it by classes. Sure, sure, sure. All right, next. Um, do you want to add any grouping levels? Oh my God, grouping levels. Now I'm getting confused. I mean, this looks class code, class name, then first name. But yeah, I like it just the way it is. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what sort order do you want? Oh, give me a break. That's too much. That's why I don't like wizards. Uh, none, or first name, last name, or city. Mm, let's do it by last name, by city. You can sort by up to four. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You can do so much. Well, let's start with, I guess, last name. And then under that, let's do city. No, let's do, sorry. Uh, let's do first name. Then can we do city? City. All right. Let's just end it. All right. So that's whatever. Next. Oh, my God. Oh my God, now what stepped or blocked or online or outline or whatever? Eh, I should do this one. Who cares? All right. Um, oh, portrait versus landscape. Portrait versus landscape. Let's go here. Let's go here. Uh oh, which one is which again? Portrait is the normal. So I'll, let's just do the portrait. All right. Oh, wait. No, there's the view, silly John. 
landscape. So portrait is the normal. Okay, that one. And next, ah, finally, uh, something I want, title. I want this one to be called, uh, what was it called? Good query. So I want students' classes. So students' classes report. All right? And finish, finally. Oh, oh shoot. No, that's no good. Class code doesn't work. Oh, I got to get out of that. No, I was not able to do that. Oh my gosh. So now I got to get out of that, get out of it, and try again. So let's get out of that. I don't want this. Delete, delete. No, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry about my weirdness. All right. I am getting weak, by the way, meaning I need to eat something. All right. So um, again, I'll say good query. Uh, create mm -hmm. report wizard. Yeah, I want all them fields. Yeah, I want to go next. I'll just stay tab. I don't care. I'll just leave it the way it is. Fine. Uh, whatever. Here, I'll just do one sort level. And I'll make, uh, you know what? You can sort records, but do I have to? Let's just see if I have to. I'll do it by last name first. No, I don't like last name. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, let's see. None or first. Oh, none. Let's say none. Let's just say none. Next. Uh, let's say that. Just keep it fine. Now here again, we're going to say students. Let's see, students classes report preview finish. Oh crap! Let's see, class code. What is going on? Again, I'm going to get rid of that. So I've got a field in there that doesn't make sense. So let me go back again, again, again. So let's close it. Oh you, 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 you. That. Uh, okay, now let's go back to this and again delete that and then here and delete, delete, delete. Yeah, I want to get rid of it again. So let's see, I've got three tables. That's right. I've got two queries. That is right. And I've got one form and I want to make a report. So what is going on? So good query, create. Um, create, what am I doing? Report, yeah, report from the report wizard. Yeah, that is what I want. Let me just now look closer at what I'm doing on this. So, query, good query. So, there are all these fields. Class code, yes, it is one of the choices. Class code, class code. Let me see where class code is. So, this is from class code. Class code where, though? It says from good query. Is that where I want all this stuff? Yeah, I want it from my query. So yes, I want it from there. Class code is right. So let's send it over. Let's send that one over. Let's send all of them over. So class code, class name, F name for first name, uh, L name, and city. Yeah, I want all that for sure. All right. So now, how do you want to view your data? Hmm, let's see. Cl by class, uh, yeah, by classes and by students. I got classes and I got students, sure. So to me, this should be fine. So let's go next. All right, now, how do you, do you want to add any grouping levels? If I don't add all these things, dun, 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 dun. let's see, let's see one more time. Otherwise, well, I'll just tell you we're going to chop this video. Oh, I'm going to tell you when the what's good and what's not. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, class code. Let's not do this darn class code thing. The class code seems to be messing us up. So class code, and then every student that has a class code. Yeah, 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 yeah. What if I said instead, though, class name? Hmm, let's see, class code. I mean, it should work. It looks fine. It looks fine. Why does this one got priority? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to say next. And I'll just say next. Skip that one. I'll just say next. Skip that one. Yet again, say classes. Students classes. Students classes. Students classes. Report. Report. Preview. Oh, crap. It's still not working. I mean, by the way, this would work if I put in a good class code. Like if I type here, see GS1060C, 
it would work, but that's not what I want it to do. You know, it'll then show that, but that's only for CGS 1060C. So I don't like it, but at least it will give us reports that way. And then if I want to change it to a different class, well, it will work also. Oh, well, all right. It's a horrible example. I apologize. I got to stop this program. I got to, I mean, this blah, blah, blah. All right. Yeah, sorry. I'm going to stop it. though. So blah, 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 blah. Let's see what's next. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to now say fine. And I want to now close print preview. And I now want to, to what? To end it. So I want to save this. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, by the way, I can also change things in here to like have spacing and stuff. Oh, I'm getting tired. So if I want to change some of that, like I can double click up here. And here I want to say now students, spaces, classes, spaces, report. There, I like that better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, all right. Now let's close it. So what's it called? It's called this whatever. So I want to close it now. Close. Do you want to save the changes? Yes, the changes I just did. Yeah. All right. Now let's double click on students. I mean, on good uh, students classes report. So now let's put in that same one again. But again, if I say CGS, this time I'll pick. Um, I'll pick, uh, what was it called? Remember, you get to do this now. So it is based on what we want. So if I say now, uh, CGS, um, ah, let's make it the same darn one again. 1060C. Okay, and now see it has the little spaces in between. All right, guys, I've got to stop this thing. All right, it will work now, but that's what it is. All right, all right, all right. Close. I want to end this thing. Okay, so let's close it. Um, it's over. Now let's end this thing, but it will work and I'll run it in class to show you. All right, fine. All right, so now, all right, now I'm going to go back to my whatever. Oops, not there. Okay, I'm just going to end this though. Okay, so I want to end my program. So I'm going to end it. And I'm going to end it. And hopefully I didn't shut that thing down. I hope not. Anyway, so I'm going to now end my, uh, my, uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Guys, have a great day. It's too much work. It's too much work. Boom. Stop recording.